I will open up our meeting with our open session. And any of our guests here would like to say anything? I, I hope you're all I'm getting very good feedback with um, the mayor's update. Um, and I'm trying to get, and anybody who would like to help us do this, I'm trying to get more emails to get it out to more residents. I am looking at um, putting out a letter to all of our residents and just putting something in. Look what you're missing. Please give us your email addresses uh, because we'd love to hear from you. Anybody who sends a comment to me or whatever, um, I answer personally. So um, anyway, I, if anybody sees anything that they would like, or just email me and we'll get it out there. Could I make a suggestion? Yes, you on the uh, on the bulletin board that's outside uh -huh. here, we might want to put something in bold that bold on that as well that says we're looking for your email to send you this information electronically. Good suggestion. And um, you know something bold and bright, okay. or paper or writing or something like that. We will people's attention walking by. We will get on that tomorrow. And um, if, if anybody has any comments, we just released our new website. It needs to be tweaked. It's not um, completed by any means, but I think it um, looks better and <laughs> easier to work than it has been in the future, or in the past, I should say. Okay. Um, our first order. Sure. Can I ask you one? Can sure. you just elaborate a little bit on that, the adding of the task force people, like what, what the actual duties are? Abs absolutely. I put that up on the website, um, and the bulletin board has it outside, so you can look Correct. at that. Um, I'm going to ask, and I realize we didn't put a date. I'd like that to have in with thing. the next two weeks for our next meeting. And, um, and when so, it says flexible hours, what does that mean? It means that we, and it's tough, and maybe Jerry, one of the reasons I have Jerry here is he's part of the current task force. It's, and Jerry, jump in. Um, it could be this all is, we over. We meet whenever we can schedule times when we can all do it, because we all have jobs during the day and such. So it's like Correct. So is it, is it mostly? Sometimes we meet in the morning. Sometimes that's we meet in the evening. At. Some days it's one day. Some days it's, it's some days, it's like difficult. when we had to meet with um, our Rockland executive that day, it was 1 o'clock in the afternoon, people were taking days off. It's, um, when, I, when we say flexible, it's, it's really flexible. Okay. Meeting with the state representatives at the time, sometimes it's difficult to work at a time. Do you have a sense of what time to I mean, it's generally over the course of a month? It, it varies. It varies, but it depends on where we're at with our you know, things are happening, but, you know, we, we've been meeting every couple of weeks or so um, for, you know, two or three hours. Um, sometimes it might be, you know, uh, it might be two meetings in a week or, or, you know, two weeks in a row we'll have a meeting. Mm -hmm. so then there's like, you know, the big public meetings happen once in a while, you know, once a quarter or something like mm -hmm. that. I was just curious about the, obviously the date thing, because if one was to do that, you know, you certainly are a limited yeah. Okay. We yeah, sometimes it's, meet it's, at uh, it's seven it's in the morning it's just because of that seven or seven thirty in the morning. Like I'll go in the school to work late sometimes to meet in the morning. Okay. And yeah. like I said, one day when we had to go meet with a day, I, I took the day off from work. Hi. I just wanted to ask Please. about minutes of the meetings. I know you take minutes at these meetings. Yes. But are there minutes from the meetings between the task force and the New York State? Thought why? It's not. It's really more of an advisory committee. It's not an official government board. So it's not. There's no real reporting requirements. We need a secretary to take it and type it up. We have to send. Couldn't comments. you just have a tape recorder? Well, that's not minutes. That would actually be. You know, that would be a recording. So if the throughway says something during one of those <coughs> negotiations. How will you prove in the future that they've said that? I don't know if it, we've ever had a reason why we needed to, to do that. I think that then people, you know, people want to know what's happening at those meetings, so I guess that's the reason. And again, if it's just as simple as having someone, a, a secretary, I guess, start talking a little late in terms of explaining the task force, I don't know if this is a part of that. Somebody to come and do that type of work. I don't think it's a very big ask of someone, especially again 
sense, it's, it's, it's that need for transparency that, you know, <coughs> everybody can open up. Yeah, and I know, let's, let's look at that. And, um, I, I have a comment also. Sure, okay, I don't um, Regarding the um, mayor's updates, um, you know, you certainly do put a very positive and proactive spin on everything. And everything I preface, I preface with all due respect because personally I'm very fond of you, but uh, professionally I'm very disturbed with the lack of transparency here. And um, the fact is, if Hope hadn't called you about the trees, if Hope hadn't talked about the sound wall, neither of those things would have been known or acted upon, but you know, the way you present it, you present it like it just came to you and you're acting on it and like you're the hero, which you know, maybe eventually you will be regarding these issues, but right now we really have had no answers, no action, um, and really still living with it on a daily basis and um, it, it just, I, I think it's really putting a positive spin on something that um, I think it's not quite accurate the way the way it's being put out there. Okay, thank you. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, what kind of action are you looking for? You're looking for action from the village, or you're looking from for action from the throughway? I'm not clear as to when you say actions. Could you be more specific? Yeah. Well, I mean, the mayor came. Ms. Jaffe came to uh, the Cameron's property, and Ms. Jaffe was absolutely horrified, and um, you know said we're going to do something about this, et cetera, et cetera. And at the last meeting, Alon said, "Could you write a letter?" We've had no letter, no communication from you. You know, we see you at the meetings, but we've had. I mean, I know other people have gotten calls from you, and like when you were. Prior to the March 20th meeting, I know you were walking around with Connie Bear, visiting people. I mean, we've gotten no feedback from you on any of the things. And, you know, talk about directly affected. I mean, these two are really directly I, affected. I might add, um, uh, Hope was there when we were there. Your sister was there. Yeah. And um, I have told uh, both your brother-in-law and your sister that uh, Brian and Connie Bear has given me a call and who's going to be calling them about putting up a temporary wall to help them with the noise barrier. Yeah. You mean, I just found that out today and no, I told that's them not today. Acceptable. That's going to be meaning. It's going to be putting up like a rubber, rubber fence. No, it's not a solution. Yeah. Would anybody else like to say anything? Um, in terms of, did you talk about, I think the last, at the last meeting we talked about expanding the task force? Yes. And, and I never got a letter. I think there was something. We have, I put it out on the website. I put so it out here and there. So you could just exactly what it is after yeah. the rain. Yeah, you can, uh, we can make you a copy. It's right out there. We're going to put it to you. Because I want to send out something that, uh, not, you know, from you that I can just push out to everyone that, you know. Yeah, we want to push it. It's on the website. It's out here. Okay, um, and we'll give you a copy of that. Right. And we're looking at, uh, I'm probably looking to get responses back with them for the next meeting. Okay. So, and they would be sending them back to Sally. Okay. Uh, can I make a comment yeah. um, yes. here? Um, you know, as a public official, we have to accept criticism. And I'm the first to realize that. There are times we do things that we could do better, and nobody can um, help us with that better than you, the public. Um, that being said, I also want you to know that uh, we are taking steps and um, actions. They might not be to your satisfaction, but they're being done. I met with the mayor. I'm sure she'll go through this in greater detail, but uh, we met with Congresswoman Lowy. Um, about a number of things, including issues that we have uh, uh, regarding uh, the need for a public meeting regarding some of the uh, issues with the freeway. Um, and one of the items that we raised that we had concerns about was specifically the issue uh, that you're facing with the trees being taken down. Um, we've also communicated with our county legislator, Nancy Well Hogan, regarding this. And uh, we also looked at wanting to see our 
um, countywide public officials get far more engaged in this conversation regarding the Tappan Zee Bridge being the gateway to Rockland, and specifically what will the sound barriers, the land sound barriers, look like. Um, and we've also been in contact with uh, uh, Brooke Crossan, who is a state engineer, to help us with the reading. I'll be going into that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. So mm -hmm. I, I don't want to step on yeah, um, with all due respect, Ms. McHugh. Excuse um, me, I am very respectful of you when you're talking, and I really would appreciate that from your turn. Um, as a resident here, and also sitting at the epicenter of this bridge construction, we are feeling the pain that you are feeling. And what is most important is that we stand united in the efforts that we undertake um, to get uh, compensation and satisfaction and attention to the issues that are specific to our individual plights and our collective plight. Yes, with all due respect, we for years have been in touch with those very officials mm -hmm. and uh, actually Schumer and Gillibrand have been very proactive mm -hmm. in advocating for the neighbors. Mm -hmm. So none of what you say to you know people like us who have been doing this for more than 20 years sounds like a magic wand. Um, we, everybody that you've contacted, we and many of the neighbors have contacted individually, both for in individual plights and for overall plights. So to you know bring more names and add them to the stew is not necessarily um, a positive because it's just more names to grandstand if something good happens and more names to pass the buck if they decide not to take action or to cave to the governor's deputies and, oh, okay, I'll be quiet. As you know, that happens. Well, you know, I, we are all, you know, walking down a path we've never been down before. We have a history of what happened the last time this bridge was built. We have a second bite of the apple. And uh, I think it takes activism and not just once and not just by one one individual but by the collective we the collective village taking action well that's what we've been begging and so for, that's, for yeah, years that's, well i think we're in the process of doing it and i do understand your frustration nobody had this no but one more thing one more thing you say we haven't been down this road before We've been down, we were down at 60 years ago. Some of us weren't around then, but we were down at 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think it's almost worse this time. Mm -hmm. And because now they're doing it with a smile and PR professionals. And what they do and what they say are two different things. It's a case of, hon, who do you believe, me or your lion eyes? So, thank you. Uh, can I say something here? Uh, I see this young lady has set up a TV camera here. This is uh, an open meeting, and as long as, and correct me if I'm wrong, Keith, as, as long as she's not obstructing anybody or that people don't feel that they can speak what they want, in, you know, what they would like to say, and it's unobtrusive, um, she can um, don't. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. Is that that, that's correct. Now, some um, municipalities will impose rules and regulations about how it can be done, but those are typically only in the case where you can have um, uh, a disruption or distraction as a result of somebody using a camera. But generally speaking, there's no there's no uh, prohibition against it. It's a public meeting. You know, as you know, many meetings are now televised to live as well. So, Do I have any say if I object to it? That I prefer the camera not be on me as a as a uh, as, as a, a as a trustee in the village of South Nine. Well, you can certainly voice. Any yes, opinion. and I do voice it. I really prefer not to be, uh, you know, on on camera. So I would ask you that you push it the other way. I'll keep your. Yeah, you're totally off camera. Great, thank you. Anything else? Uh, this is something separate. Huh? In terms of, and I I heard this from one of the neighbors, and I just kind of don't understand it better. Um, there's two uh, apartment buildings next to 200 Paramount Avenue, which someone said was up for sale. Is that correct? I I don't know that. My understanding is that, yes, Columbia is trying to sell those. 
And then is there a Ooh. group of people that are looking, or is it a, a corporation that's looking at it? Is there a religious group looking, looking at, at it? it? Is Just there that it's up for sale. And how do we understand how that sale, you know, is there something in terms of? I think that's yeah. a, a question for our lawyer. Well, I don't know anything about it. Typically, these are private transactions, um, so there wouldn't be any official public information about such a thing, and it would typically be whatever one finds out from, you know, the, from listening to the railroad tracks, you know. Right, right. I, I just didn't know if there was if, if there was a large a large um, piece of property that had X amount of residents within it. Does there is there some type of alert that goes off on a on a town level? I mean obviously think they're on the why, board. Why level. would there be such an alert? I mean, no, 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 I mean if all of a sudden someone's buying a large piece of property with lots of like if someone bought, you know you mean you're talking like if they bought the Eagle Brock or whatever it's called? Yeah. Is there something they're that... Free, they're free to do it. Absolutely. I don't see where the village uh, No, I don't think any. that... I, I'm just wondering is, if, if there's ever something that comes up. If there's a land use issue, that and they're they're gonna change, if is. they were going to change the building or change the use is. of it, yeah. then they would be involved by the village. It's a simple... Right, and if there's, a, if, if there's an application to a land use board, but otherwise the only That's way... I mean, you yeah. can have a private yeah. transaction... So if they just... Yeah, it is just build it and keep it as it is. It's yeah. no different okay. than when you bought That's your house. Really what it, yeah. that, that was really my question. No. Right, and the only other thing <laughs> is... <laughs> Land use. I mean, the only other thing that would happen would be the, uh, the tax assessor would get a recording of the recording of the deed if there's a new owner so that the tax bills ultimately would be changed to reflect the new owner. And of course, that's public information. Yeah, you know, right. The owner yeah. and the tax, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't that surprise you? Thank you. Thank you for putting that up. I don't know. I would like to say I got a nice note from Jennifer Rothschild who said she thought the village was going in the right direction and was pleased. So I, I was happy about that. I'm getting a lot of good comments from the mayor's update. And I always, I always put in there, if anybody wants to contact me or email me, to please feel free to do so. Any other? Just one question. Go ahead. Do you have any timeline or update about the meeting that's going to be held to I announce to the talk SUP about path? That. Oh, you are? Yes, I am. You are, okay. Yes, I, okay. I have just one other thing, Mayor, before. Sure, sure. Uh, at the last meeting, I mentioned that uh, that I felt very strongly that South Nyack was the lead agency uh, in the regard to the Rockland side of Rockland County. Mm -hmm. That uh, South Nyack is the village that is most definitely affected and most definitely affected in a negative way. Now, apparently, somebody must have taped list weeks meeting you know, two weeks ago because somebody but I, I I don't want to mention his name but somebody wrote and said that he thought that I was being apparently being narrow-minded and uh, I should be open to all these suggestions from these other surrounding villages and I personally have a hard time accepting that concept because the village of South Nyack is had really been under the gun regarding this construction and as some very bright woman down in Salisbury said, uh, South Nyack is the governor's collateral damage down here. We're the people. We are the people of South Nyack that are listening to the banging out there that started this morning has been going on. I spoke to a, a man from uh, Tappan Zee Contractors. There are a thousand piles going in out there each one takes approximately, because I timed them, takes approximately 35 to 40 minutes. So at a thousand pilings going in there, that's 500 hours of banging away. Bang, 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 bang. You know, every other second it's going off there. Same thing with the, uh, the carnival atmosphere with the lights out there at night, because for people who don't live near there, it doesn't affect you. But for people that do live near there, it's a it's certainly something that's uh, affecting our quality of life now I, I passed out 
these things here. This came from Empire, the Empire of the Insurance oh, Company. Yeah. Anybody wants to take a look at it. And what it does, it talks about the effect of noise on people. Yeah. So this is from somebody else, and we certainly have it, the effect on it. <coughs> so if this gentleman feels that I'm out of line regarding the village of South Nyack, I think he's going to have to live with that because that's my statement, that's how I feel. The people of Piemont have nothing to say about what we do here in South Nyack. The people of Nyack have nothing to say about what we do here. And if anybody has a problem with them, they certainly can contact me, and I'll speak to them and tell them the same thing over and over again. And I don't answer emails, so it's, uh, you know. Thanks. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, just one last thing. The meetings used to be tape recorded by um, Sally. Do you no longer use tape recorders to record the meeting yes, minutes? Yes. Oh, you still do. Okay, so those meetings. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. The thank tapes you. were getting. Okay. And we have to yeah. keep these tapes for six months. Right. Oh, you, and then you can get rid of them. That's correct. Okay. Cool. Okay. If we can move on out um, of open session to approve the regular minutes of May twenty seventh, if everybody's had a chance to read those. On May 27th, mm -hmm. uh, in the first paragraph of Franklin Street Park Tennis Court, the phrase is used, um, National Junior Tennis and Learning Program for under-resourced kids. Um, and I think that should be taken out. I mean, Karen was clear that it was meant to be open to everyone. And although she may feel that they benefit more, uh, she, she made a point of saying that it's open to everyone for free, period. So I think that should be reflected in this. That's all I have. Anything else? Do I have a motion to accept the minutes of May 27? Yes. I'll make the motion that we accept the minutes of um, Tuesday, May 27. Excuse me. I have a second. I'll second. All in favor? No, Aye. Aye. Special meeting June 4th. Has everybody had a chance to read those minutes? Do I have? Yes, I'll make a, I'll make a motion to approve the special meeting of South Nyack Board of Trustees, Tuesday, June 4, 2014. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Police report. property. It was a sinkhole. It was about 16 feet deep, so they had to take out the storm drain that goes down that property in order to make a repair to the sewer. Uh, that was done, and our sewer sanit uh, storm drain was put back, and we made sure that it was correct. Any questions? Was this a big Was this a tennis court? Um, so far, it's a few hundred dollars for the materials. 
um, I did order the, the paint. I don't have the, the exact okay, price so on that. Nothing at all. Nothing what we're looking at uh, to have done with the uh, other method. So hopefully this one will last as long enough to find some funding. Okay. The courts are in use while the... Um, the courts are open. They've been open since uh, last Friday. Uh, Village Justice. Uh, May receives total $19,128 of the $17,136 received in April. $7,599 went to the state. $9,537 was retained by the village. The building code fire inspector made fees total $570, and we all have a list of what they were for. Village clerk, your receipts, the May receipts total $775. Now the question we go ahead. Yes, go ahead, Trustee. Sally, uh, it seems like a this is an excessive amount of the loan permits. I mean, do these people know something that we don't know? I mean, <laughs> now these are. <laughs> it, it just seems like there's a lot of them, and normally we don't. I mean, I know. Well, that's them. because the in the past, if we renew a lot, a person who has an alarm pays twenty five dollars a year. Oh, they do. Oh, okay. And in the past, it's been spread out over a year, but now we send out our our alarms oh. all in all in the month, okay. one time. Great. Oh, my question. What is, what is Macadets? Oh, that is a, um, a, a peddler. She's been riding food down to the uh, men at the uh, women mm -hmm. uh, at the uh, trestle. Okay. It's a, it's a peddler. Oh, yeah. Treasurer report. We have that year today. We want to look that over. Keith, do we have anything from you? Nothing to report. Okay. Old business, fuel dispensing and storage system review bids. We'll talk about that. We have the bids. Uh, I believe Sally put them in the packet there. The one bid yeah. is the most. Um, there's a little bit of addition to it, so I don't know if you and I want to get together and go over some of the other things that are part of it before we make a final decision. Or that's, that's not going to be the final number, and above that number, as we discussed, is the uh, fire suppression system, and then the work that we Is that the do. gem store? Or um, is that the, that is the, no, the expenses lowest, bid, the 91.6? No, the lowest bid was uh, 47. Was right, yeah. a Vero safe, or Vero Box. safe, okay. So, uh, what do you want to just hold off until Let we can... Do you, do you have something you want to discuss beyond the idea of split of uh, beyond the idea of eliminating the gasoline temporarily, which I don't think is well I I raised the question if we were ever gonna see the police move out of here to a, a new location, if at that point we would put in a fuel depot for the police at that spot, we use very little gasoline. And the gasoline requires the fire suppression system and all that. So if that was somewhere on the docket, then we can do away with it, but Juan and I discussed it, it seems like. The, the idea is that the, the, the diesel the diesel alone is, would, would be less expensive. The problem is that that uh, um, it's a significant problem for Brent dealing with Nyack and having to go I and buy gas at retail. So, uh, you know, we might want to discuss how it's broken out between the police budget and the village budget based on that, because it is, it is the case that the gasoline side of it incurs more expense. Okay. than the diesel side. Okay. And Jimmy's use of gasoline is almost negligible. We could do, we could do it without it. So maybe maybe we need to talk to Brent about how we balance the cost. And we should, we should bring that up with the police board. You we don't have to take it to the police that's board, but, but I think that's something we should, we, okay. should, we should talk about because that is significant. It's different from what we originally anticipated. Okay. Um, okay. So I would suggest that maybe you want to talk to Brent and yeah, we'll take it to his board. Get okay. all the numbers together and give you something concrete. Mm -hmm. Interior painting bits. Is that, do we have anything new on that? You were going to look up, Keith. Did you find anything for us? That yeah. Um, it's minor, it just so happens that the two lowest bids are supposedly these are sole proprietors and therefore have no employees. 
and if that's the case, then they don't have to pay themselves for the only wage. So you, you, there is an exception in that case. Generally speaking, all municipal contracts that are let out require the payment of the, of the applicable uh, prevailing wage to its employees. Um, so, but on the other hand, if there are no employees, we, we kind of have this conversation. But, last but week. I think the problem with it gets back to intent. I mean, clearly, one person is not going to do the whole job, and so obviously, they're going to have people in there who they're going to 1099. And as far as I'm concerned, that's just a, a, a mechanism for circumventing the prevailing wage, and I don't think that we can condone that. I mean, it's not appropriate. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do I don't know. Uh, being Sally and I talked this afternoon. I don't know whether these couple of of uh, bidders are one woman man operation. What if they were one man operation? Then, they, then it doesn't apply because um, um, because they don't have any employees, and they can choose. If they're a sole proprietor, they could choose to pay themselves less than the than the prevailing wage. So then, I think what we need to do is we have to have Denise tomorrow to call them up and see if, if they're a one man show, so to speak. Then we can look at that. If they're not, then we can't. All right. Is that what you're saying, Keith? Yeah. I mean, I think to Alan's point is uh, you, you you want to know what you're buying. Right. And and the and the, the, in, the intent of uh, the labor law is to make uh, which you might. Uh, uh, agree with or you might not, but the intent is to is to assure a, less, a, a minimum level of wage for employees. So. What question do you want to ask? Well, the question I have is if this is a singular employee, how long would it take to get the job done as opposed to somebody who puts in the I think that's, that's not the issue. The issue I is... I understand that, but you know, it, it is in terms of cost. It, it is, the two lowest bids, yeah. so then for the two lowest bids, how much time would that job take if it's one person painting versus somebody who has who's paying the prevailing rate and, and But even if it's one person painting, the clear intent is to circumvent I, I very much disagree with the prevailing wage law, but it is the law. Mm -hmm. And 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 simply finding a simple mechanism to get around it by being a sole proprietorship and not taking a salary mm -hmm. is it may be the, maybe appropriate to the letter of the law, but it's not the intent. And you know, by by uh, engaging someone like that, I think that we're you know engaging in uh, missing the purpose of the law I don't, in exchange I, I, for the I, letter I, of the in law. That, in that case, I don't agree because the intent was really to protect the employee. So if you're both the employer and the employee, you, you don't fall into that category. So the alternative really is to go out further and solicit uh, bids from companies that are going to yeah. pay prevailing wage, we know that that's going to you know, double or triple the cost. So um, th those are basically your alternatives. Yeah, but I would be in favor of, of casting a wider net to find someone who does legitimate prevailing wage rather than someone who is willing to you know, structure their company in such a way as to avoid that law. Which is well, what Keith is saying, they're not structuring their company to avoid their law. They are the company. It's just them. Yes, I understand. But um, if, it's, if in fact that it really is but, just, well, uh, that's just Jack right. Painter or Jane Painter, then um, and, and you might like the work that Jack or Jane does, and um, that's a great deal because it's less expensive than prevailing wage. It's less expensive than uh, uh, you know, using. You know, why don't we, before we make a decision, why don't we have Denise go out and see if there are any other folks out there who are willing to come in and give us some estimates? Oh, oh, I, you know, I have to object, and I just say that because this has been going on for how many weeks now. We've put a, a, a call for bids. We had six people respond. I think we've met our obligation in terms of the receipt of, of um, you know, of, of uh, Potential contractors. Uh, I just think we should make a decision. Well, is there let me let me just say that of the others that are on of the six that are here, yeah. there are there are six in this bottom list. Two of which are also up top. Yes. Of these six, none of those other four that are down here yes. are paying prevailing wages. So all those so people would have, have to re would have to reissue a bid with mm -hmm. prevailing wages. Okay. We did indeed. We see we've already received one of those who's reissued it. 
this is from two weeks ago, so there's, it's not been reflected here. But the, and, um, we, I don't know exactly how she phrased her question to these two people who said that they even had no employees. Whether she phrased, are you going to be paying all by yourself? <laughs> Whether that question was put forth, I don't know. But that's the question you would want raised now. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. So are, are you? My sense is that they'll say, yes, yes, it's just me, so they can get the contract. Right. All right. And and that may or may not be their intent. But I think it, I think we're supposed to go a little bit beyond that. If we were just a, 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 you know, a private corporation well, with yeah, contract, well, but, but, but fine. The way you go beyond that is in the contract with this contractor. There are going to be stipulations about how it, how the contract is, is, is structured, and a prohibition against violation of uh, the labor law. And if it's a sole proprietorship, then it can be only that one person um, who's doing the work. So that's the way you would ferret out and whether they're really complying with it or not. Because you're right. I mean, you don't want to uh, go down the primrose path, and it turns out that. You know, you show up in there, 10 painters here. And can you draw that contract up? Yes. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Hey, can I ask another question here? Is there any chance of getting a hold of the labor department and, you know, explaining the situation to them and saying, like, we're between a, a rock and a hard place in this situation, and it's not clear to us what we really can do? Well, I can certainly be in touch with them. I mean, it's clear to me what we can do, but if you, if you wanted some... Thing from the labor department, we could possibly a waiver or something in this situation. I mean, well, if we want, we can certainly be in touch with the labor department and and uh, explain that we're trying to comply sure. with them. But however, this is a situation that's really not clear. And, and if, if that doesn't work, I think we should go with one of these people and make and have Keith write up. Does the board agree? Yeah. And we have Keith write up uh, the contract, and it's got to be. You know, if it's Bonnie Christian, it's got to be Bonnie Christian who comes in every day and paints and, and, and paints. Well, that's right. I think what you really are saying is that you want a comfort level that if you go this way, you're complying with the mm -hmm. requirements of uh, the prevailing wage law and that you don't find out that you know, this is, in fact, a subterfuge and that you right. then Correct. Are, uh, and, and I think that's what it wants. That's yeah, so, what I'll, so what I can do is I can be in touch with the Labor Department. We can see if we can get, you know, a definitive opinion letter of some kind. Um, and I think that'll make, that'll help out. Good. All right. Anything else on uh, painting bits? Go Paying net services participation agreement. Are we going to hold that off until we, rent? We, we can. Uh, I, I was hoping Brent would be here because I've been speaking with Dave about this. This is the same company as I mentioned before That's that they would have originally come mm -hmm. down, but we have a lot more information about them. Um, Dave spoke to them in some detail and also found out some of the other municipalities that are using them, um, which certainly made me a lot more comfortable about it. Um, you know, if you want to wait till Brent is here, to, to go ahead and sign it, we can do that. I asked Dave to get the agreement in place so that we wouldn't have to go, you know, cycle after cycle uh, discussing it. But if you want to hold it, it's here. Um, I would like to we hold could, it and speak to Brent. Okay, uh, we like could we could pass a resolution authorizing you to sign it pending your discussion with Brent. If you want, can we do something like that? Uh, uh, if the board would right. like to do that, yeah. that's fine. Well, I, I, I don't see any reason to put it off. And we talked about okay. this and gone round and round. As long as you're okay, that's the final the final hurdle. Let's. Let's do, do I that. have a resolution? I'll make a resolution to empower the mayor to sign the uh, contract with GovPayNet to provide um, services for the police department and the village to accept um, credit and debit card payment. Do I have a um, second? No, second not. Pen pending her okay. discussion with the chief of police. Okay. Do I have a second? No, second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, can I have that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, two weeks ago at our last board meeting, I brought up uh, the Knickerbocker benches that um, uh, TZ Construction, uh, Brian, Brian Connie Bear had showed us, and they were willing to pay for those if we thought that they would look nice or wanted them around the Esposito Trail. Um, Alon stated that he felt, you know, if this was going to be 
looked at as a gift and in lieu of something else. He really didn't think we should do that. I'm, and uh, we put it on because we're going to go over it once. And what is the consensus of the board? I'm leery. I mean, like, okay, because of the past history of not so much Tappan Zee contractors, but the true way, and you know, we're in a public relations situation with them right now. Okay. And, Kathy? and I think if they, if they have an opportunity to to run with the flag of look how well we're doing, we may not have any. Second bite of that apple. Okay, Kathy, you're. Um, I think I'm more of a pragmatist here. Um, it's a gift. Uh, it's um, something that we don't already have there. It holds us to no obligation, or doesn't put any pressure on us to um, to respond to the throwaway authority of Tennessee constructors in any particular way. Um, very attractive looking. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, how about if we hold, um, we don't have to make a decision today anyway, um, Andrew Goodwill is not here, he will be at the next meeting, or if we bring that up again. Yeah, I think it all comes down to trying to predict the future here. You know, that's, um, Can I just ask, how, how was presented to you when he first came to you? And I, he just walked up and said, No, no, we were, we were, no, we I mean, were at a meeting, and he just said, he was in a conversation with this person who builds them, and um, he wanted me to bring it before the board to see if we had any interest that they would put them along the Esposito Trail. If we had an interest, no cost to the village. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So that's just how it came up. So if we want to table it um, so Andrew comes back, we can do that. Noise monitor proposal from Brooke. Okay. Everybody has a Anybody copy can get a copy from of this Brooke year, this and, um, okay. This is uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. It's basically, um, I just can say about did it. Did everybody it have a chance? I, I know that Kathy and I spoke to him at length. <coughs> um, we are. I know that the board has brought up um, about meetings of the noise monitors what we would like to see the noise monitors show, what they are showing. Um, uh, Brian Connie Bear had said three weeks ago, we'll get you something. Nothing's been done. And um, so we've spoken to Brooke Crossan, and I know that in the past, uh, Salisbury Point has hired them and used them. Um, um, yes, do you want, is that just a comment or? or I'm making just a comment. Okay. Um, and that's how I got his name to call. And he has uh, given us a proposal of about, he doesn't think it's going to take any more, approximately $1,600 with his hours, with the environmental scientist, his analyst, to get back to us and explain to us about. Um, how the noise monitor works, how we can get it to work maybe the way we want it to. And um, I'm just putting it before the board. That, um, are you interested in us doing this for the village? Yes. Are you not? Yes. Um, yes, yes. Does he have any any current work on this project? Do you know if he's... Um, what um, I can, te te what I can tell you is that um, uh, we don't have him actively working with us at the moment in Salisbury. He did do work with the village of Tarrytown in the review of the, um, the the concerns that both the village of Tarrytown had, the Quay, which is a uh, condominium complex in Tarrytown, and Salisbury Point relative to what the noise was going to be um, like to live with with the pile driving. And recall that when um, the DEIS, which was the draft environmental impact study, and then the final environmental impact study came out, there was adjustments that were made to that document based on the work that he had done and the analysis he had done with both looking at those lengthy documents and conversations with um, the experts that the Thruway Authority had hired at the time. Um, we have every reason to believe that uh, 
there wouldn't be no sound monitors placed anywhere had it not been for his you know, diligent work in um, challenging what those documents had to say. And that um, at the time, I had approached the mayor of South Nyack and thought that it would be helpful to engage all of us in that. Um, the decision then was was no, and that was, you know, a decision then. But we're faced now with having the sensitive equipment, um, you know, placed all around the village and without a clear um, understanding of what the data is recording and how to interpret it, and that there's been some um, misunderstanding as to how to interpret that data, and we're lay people when it comes to this, and it's, we think, enormously important that, um, and I think of your plight with the trees being taken down, that the amount of noise that you were facing is different than when you had, you know, mature trees there. Um, but more importantly, there's action that should be taken if there is um, a violation of the the sound um, decibels, and that they have 30 minutes. To, to the I'm board. sorry. Okay. That they have 30 minutes up to. Um, uh, Responded to record that there's a violation and an hour to shut it down. And after that is shut, the whatever the noise is shut down, they have to have corrected play that they'll never do it again. And all of that sounds very helpful, but if we don't know how to interpret the data, how do we know that in fact they're not violating it? So we don't know. So I think the question here that we've raised as a board is. Um, uh, we have to keep them honest by having people with that level of expertise um, reading that data on behalf of those of us in the village. So I, if, I hope everybody's had a chance to read this. If not, mm -hmm. but I would like to be able to um, call Mr. Cross in the back and on behalf of the village um, use his time and energies and his expertise I would need a resolution to do that. I would like the resolution that we call Mr. Crossan and ask him to or hire him to do the necessary work regarding the noise factor on Tap and Z contractors. And uh, he will give us his expertise and interpret the sound monitors that are spread throughout uh, the village of South Nyack. Can, can we put a cap of 10 hours, as he suggests, on that before we re uh, For the, To yeah. we go no higher than the 16 Well, hours. make it 10 hours. He has 10 hours, which would, okay. couldn't conceivably go above 1,800 because that's fine. it was all him. Okay. So, so I would say 10 hours. hours. And that's okay. to be reviewed. And then reviewed. Yes. yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Right. I'll make the resolution. Okay. Do I have a second? Sure. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. I think it's also helpful to know that it's not just having a better understanding of the noise data, but that we've also asked him to clar help to clarify for us the type, the color, the height of the, no the land noise barriers that are um, uh, proposed to be installed um, in the village. Uh, he had uh, given some really very helpful suggestions at the time when there were public hearings, and we have not heard um, what the uh, sewer authority is planning on doing. And um, I don't want us to get caught blindsided, and I, I don't think, and I know that the mayor doesn't want that. Either. So, um, as, as I said earlier, they're, they're over. A, they're going to be over a thousand pile drive, a thousand piles being driven in at, at least 35 to 40 minutes per, per, so that's over 500 hours, more than 500 hours that we're, that certainly we've been, I don't know how many we've been subjected to, but there's a lot more in the future. They said that 20% of them are Well, that's a lot of noise, and I, I have one of these things here for somebody who wasn't here. They talk about how noise affects you. And this is from the Empire, the health uh, insurance company, and I, I think it's a fairly reliable. Uh, so they talk, they talk about danger zones regarding hearing. And, you know, for us to be put in a danger zone because of this, then I certainly think we have some 
we should have some say to it. And the only way to do it is to hire an expert who can understand it. Thank you. Um, while we're just talking about this, um, I had a conversation with Brian Connie there yesterday. He is uh, he was having a meeting today. He's looking to call me with a date for um, our community meeting. At at that point, um, we will look at either the uh, Nia College or the Living Christ Church. I don't know who will be available at that time. Um, he is looking at, I have asked them to present, I know the task force had some ideas, the task force along with Greg Tulin, who's been working with the task force, came in with some ideas and met with us. I know that uh, Michael Hogan had a couple of ideas and some other residents, and I have asked Brian to make sure that each concept is looked at, and we've kind of decided that it will be a workshop where they will have different concepts set up that um, all the people in the village will look, go look at each one, um, see what their thoughts are, and that type of thing. So I'm looking at getting a date from him this week, and hopefully it gives us enough time to get a community meeting by the end of June. Um, my goal was to have one at the end of June because July and August, you know, everybody's going on vacation and, and then we get lost down the road and um, it, it's time. So um, I will uh, certainly um, put that out there as soon as I can. And you've been pressing him for this meeting since on about the 23rd of May. Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> um, you know, he's been asking for more time, more time. Um, but it's come to the point where I said, you know, we're running out of time. But I do want to make sure that no concept goes overlooked. I think it's important for every concept to be put out there. Okay. Go ahead first because he's here. The South, okay. The South, South Nyack, 10 mile run. Come on up. How are you? Mike, your last name is? Angola. A-N-G-A-R-O-L-A. -A. First off, I want to apologize for not being here at the end of May. I know we were on the schedule, but I uh, just totally forgot. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. You're honest, man. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this year will be the 26th running of the okay. South Nyack 10 model, with your permission, of course. And once again, we're I'm representing the Rockland Roadrunners and would like to use your parks, your roads, your parking spaces and bring in about 600 runners and <coughs> same as everything. As long as the construction doesn't screw us up at all, which I don't think it will this year. I don't think it will. It's a Saturday anyway, right? It's, it's, a, it's a Sunday. Sunday. Oh, it's a Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the only day that we could really run this race is Sunday because we use so many of the streets and to go out to the end of the pier and there's a lot going on if we would try to do it on a Saturday it wouldn't work so uh, just sticking with Sunday so it's always the first Sunday after Labor Day so this year will be the 7th of September. Everybody kind of like those ice pops we have. Yeah, so, you know, where they came from but, uh, they were a big hit yeah yeah so we're uh, expecting this year about 600 people we're we're also looking with uh, to work with uh, Dick Sporting Goods in the mall, they're thinking of sponsoring the race this year. We're sort of doing what's going over there. This would be nice. And uh, charities are, are pretty, or, or the beneficiaries, I should say, are pretty much the same. We're not including the ambulance corps this year, only because uh, the club is is getting behind the ambulance corps race in December. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, so we figured that which was very successful. Which was very successful yes. for the first running of that, and I'm sure that's going to continue sure. as well. Great. So the club will make a contribution Great. and 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 for and for their race. Or, otherwise, it's the it's the two firehouses, the one on the pew and the depot, and and the Piermont Firehouse, uh, the uh, the Sunday supper, uh, soup soup angels, the both night at food kitchens and. Uh, we're also giving money to the Rock and Roll on a scholarship fund, which is something new that we started uh, this past year. We gave out four thousand dollars this year in scholarships right. to to Rockland counties. We get ninety percent of the volunteers that cost most of the race are all high school students, and all from running programs throughout the county. So, so we want to give back a little bit to them too. So again, I'm just asking for your permission, hopefully. And we go. Do I have a resolution? I'll certainly make the resolution that we 
grant permission to the South Nyack 10 mile run on the 7th of uh, September using the facilities of the village of South Nyack as needed. Is that, do we have the insurance? Mm -hmm. and yeah. We will get. Right. We always get. Yeah. Yeah. We will get. I know, but it should be already in there. Subject, yeah, subject, 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 subject to the insurance. To the insurance. Yeah, and actually, is, um, I think it's seven. you guys, uh, Grandview, Piermont, yeah. and uh, who else? Who else is other insured? I think that's it. Well, right? we know you're you're a few feet into Orange Town, so I always have to approach yeah. them. Okay, yeah. we always do that as well too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Orange Town provides us with with the border zones, which is nice. All right, well, second, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It's all okay. for good weather, that's all. Hey, wait. 25 years. It's never rained on the time. Oh, oh, not that good. Good. So if you're planning a wedding or something, it's September 7th is the day. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Yoga in the Park, Summer Fall of 2014. I have um, the application filled out by the South Park Weather, who, um, He's a certified yoga instructor. He wants to start a, a outside class. It's going to be, subsequently, it's going to use both the trail for a run and then finishing up with a uh, a workout. It's going to be he, he um, it'll be five eight people uh, and perhaps up to about eight nine o'clock in the morning p.m. maybe six to seven uh, once a week. Um, maybe a job a one mile job on the on the trail. And finishing with a yoga workout in the park. Could he do this? Well, he wants to do this oh, in the summer. Yeah, oh, yeah, summer, but once a week. What is the, you said once a week. Yes. No, Does he, he say mm, no? Because he has a he has an organizer. Okay. Yeah, he's waiting for permission to go forward. <laughs> there was an email I closed that came from uh, Andrew regarding this. It's in your packet. Mm -hmm. Is this a, a full profit? This is, yeah, this is the same question that we go around and, and, and around because, yeah. you know, it keeps changing. As He's to what trying to people to participate in this? He, he is, and I think, but let me just say, I think what we're currently at, and we're allowing Jeff uh, at, at the Night Fitness to use the, the, the uh, facilities, um, subject, of course, to the insurance and so on, which this would be. But the general rule has been that if you don't, <coughs> Even if you're a for-profit, if you are not using the village property to the exclusion of anyone else, we've so far said okay. Right. Now that still leaves our potential tennis friends, because that's a different situation where if you're using the tennis court, nobody else using the tennis court. So this is going to come up again. But for now, that's what we've done. And I think, I think if we allow Fisaldo uh, uh, to, to use that on a regular basis, which he does, and, and presents us every year with his insurance, uh, rider naming the village. I, I think we have to extend the same uh, deal to to, any, to anyone else who wants to use it. Like it. <coughs> it doesn't answer the question, of tennis courts, but we haven't been asked that yet. So, Keith, you you're in sync with that. That's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it works for me. I mean, uh, you you can impose a uh, time limitation you can see if it doesn't work then you know you don't have to renew the license so well we're not are we giving the license for a specific term not particularly although well we well, to Castaldo I think we did he give him a year he gives us a year's uh, he his time is a year yeah but that's <coughs> because, because he gives us a new insurance correct. thing every year because probably his insurance renews every year right and so in practice, is, that's the way it's going. So maybe right. that's how we do well, it. My suggestion would be to put a term on these things right. so that you can re review mm -hmm. uh, them if it doesn't work. I mean, and frankly, um, yeah, I mean, I don't imagine it's going to be um, disruptive or uh, obtrusive. Sounds, but other yeah. kinds of things could be. Yeah. His comment here in the application, yeah, I should put that. I will be conducting a yoga slash runners class one or two times per week in Elizabeth Park and only and only Oh, with, with um, Elizabeth. Trail. Yes, that was his, yes, he wants to go run the trail mm -hmm. and then he'd go oh. to finish with, I guess, stretching exercises in uh, Elizabeth Park. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you see Andrew suggested 
then you can consider that and consider having it in the. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a separate that's He's a, asking us the question, and he understands that the, 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 mm -hmm. he understands the insurance requirement that we right. have. Oh, yes, I'm not That was the beginning. And he's filled out the application. Yes, that I, was the beginning. It's my so, feeling that, that, that we have in the past permitted this type of thing, and we should continue, although perhaps we should at each time now that we're asked. Well, put a one year, although there's been a functional one year um, term to it, we should actually uh, word the resolution that way. And that would also mean that we would be sure to know that the insurance is continually uh, okay. Yeah, right. Otherwise, we might be five years down the road with one insurance right. document from the first time. Um, so, to that end, I would make a motion that we allow this gentleman to. Uh, use the park in the way described in the application subject to is providing insurance for the term of one year when it which time it would be reviewed. Second. second. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tina, did you want to come up and say something? <clears throat> so I'm here to request that all village board meetings be video recorded and archives on the Village Board website, or um, maybe a link be provided on the Village Board website where residents could go and, <coughs> sorry, I'm cold, and look at the meetings. Um, there are members of this community, obviously you're not here, you can see that there's usually about the same number of people here. And I don't think it's because people don't care. I think it's because, you know, um, you're working, you have kids, there's homework, there's activities, and you're not able to make it. But it's not that you don't want to know what's going on. And it would be an amazing um, convenience for residents, and it would provide transparency, and it would just be great community outreach. Um, even though I'm doing it tonight, I'm not advocating that I do it. Um, I will have this meeting and any other meetings archived, and I'm happy to share them with you. Um, or share with anybody that wants to see it. So. Keith, your thoughts? Oh, uh, well, my, my initial thought would be to refer the question to the newly formed communications committee, because I think <coughs> they're thinking about these <coughs> kinds of things. And then, um, you know, Dina's proposal can go to them. They can m munch on it and then report back and make recommendations back to the board. I think that would be the thing. Right, and then and Dina's aware have, of yeah, that. She and I spoke today. I had emailed you know, Bonnie and, and Andrew as the you know, <laughs> committee chairperson to suggest it. And Andrew sent back a great, really um, enthusiastic email saying that he thinks videotaping and posting online would be. Um, his words were a great idea and it promotes convenience for residents and transparency. But that you know they were still mm -hmm. forming their ideas and um, he was hoping to be able to um, I guess talk about it some more at their next meeting. So and are, are you okay with that? Yeah, and I okay. mean certainly if you decide that you're going to do it and you want this meeting or you know, maybe it, it could take them a while. I don't know how mm -hmm. long it could take them, okay. but you know, I'd be happy to share anything with them or my expertise with them or whatever. That would be great. You know? Thank you. Great. If I may say, uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't want to be the fly in the ointment here, but uh, I, uh, I'm not quite sure that there isn't a larger group of people who come to these meetings every other, every other Tuesday. I think it's the people who really care who do come. And when there are big issues, like we had an issue down in Salisbury, you couldn't get into this place. So whether it's people make excuses, well, I got the babies, I'm working late, I can't. I think part of it is, is also, and I think a large part of it is indifference on the part of a lot of people. And if, now, I'm not saying that your idea isn't a good idea. I prefer not to be on, on the camera. You know, I'm like Bartleby, I prefer not to be, you know. So, but on the other hand, uh, you know, you're gonna, you wanna put it out there, maybe it will, it will maybe it'll spur more people to watch or to become interested right. or to actually yeah, maybe, 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 it might. It maybe, might. maybe it, nobody will watch it maybe they won't you know I, I don't really know this is an experiment obviously it's not a it's not a given so <laughs> I prefer not to be on on the camera so I mean that's my own personal uh, feeling uh, how much is going to do to everybody out there to sit there and sit through uh, two hours of uh, 
of a trustees board meeting. Well, and you wouldn't really I'm have to sure. do that. And you could. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, I'm would, here. But well, maybe why would I look at it? You know, maybe you look at the agenda and you see, well, the dog park is, you know, on here. And if, for example, like I'm doing this tonight, maybe somebody wants to watch, you know, the part that I have to they say. They can pick and choose. I can, you know, make little notes that say, you know, at 25 minutes, they discuss the videotaping or. You know, then people could scroll through. They could find that spot. They could watch what they're interested in. And, it's up to them. And that's it's up to them. Yeah. You know, um, America is a free country. And, they can you know, they can choose to to watch sure, whatever I mean, they want. They can choose to have their own opinions. And uh, you know, we're, and we certainly will be open to listen to people's <coughs> opinions. If they come here. That's that's the American way. You know, and the community is already talking on the Facebook page. I mean, even. When I suggested that I was going to do this, I had over 50 people respond to that. And I thought, wow, what if even a tenth of those people decided they were going to watch the meeting? How many of those people have ever been to a meeting here? That's uh, the someone, question. You know, See, I'm, 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 I'm being the I'm being the. Well, I would say probably most of them not. But probably it's not, not, you know, but the fact that it is available to them, you know, you could watch it on your iPhone at the bus stop if you wanted to. Yeah. You know, will there be any... Um, um, editing of this? I mean, I would not suggest. This is, you know, whatever you and the communications committee decide. Mm -hmm. You could provide two versions. You could mm -hmm. say, this is the meeting in its entirety, and this is a highlight video. So if somebody wanted to watch a, mm -hmm. you know, 15-minute version of it, you could do it that way. You could do anything you want. But, I, I mean, as far as who public actually, access... Who would actually do that? I mean, as you said tonight, maybe you'd be here to do it. Maybe it might be somebody else. But right. I mean, um, you know, that depends. I mean, you could have someone volunteer to do it, or you could pay someone to do it. You could, you know, there are plenty of people that, you know, in this community that know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a good thing to bring up with Andrew and the communication. Um, and we'll be back next week. And I think we should talk. That's fine. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. MS score annual report acceptance and available for review. Do you have any MS score? Well, it just, uh, it just came today. Okay. Uh, okay, so we need to have it. What is this? Uh, Jim, do you want to MS score. It's our stormwater control. Yes. The board has to accept it from the contractor. Also, it sits available for public review. Yes. Okay. We can't not accept it. Absolutely. We only know what the. But did you, did you take a look at what you did? Yeah. I mean, we, Denise and I did it with her, so you did. Oh, okay. I looked through it today. Mm -hmm. It's just got to sit available. Denise puts it on the website, mm -hmm. so it has to be available for 30 days as part of the MS4. But we have to accept it after that, or we accept it before that? Accept the report and make it available. Okay, then I'll make a motion to accept the report. Second. All in favor? Aye. And this is something just this past meeting you authorized to go yes, forward. Yes, to go forward, mm -hmm. yeah. The next, so this is this past year. So this, is, this is the area, <coughs> yeah, exactly. Has anybody ever looked at this? Has anybody ever come in and requested to look at itself? It's an enormous... Look, no, yeah. I'm just asking, has anybody ever requested to No, no it's okay. stayed on our, on our top of our... No, but, but we're required to do it. Presumably it's not so much for public consumption, but that the that DEC wants to be able to say, yeah, sure. no, that well, we're... I mean, know, I'm just know, curious, one of those... And you know what happens if we don't do it? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm saying we have to do it. I'm not saying yeah. that. We, we just that that we're, uh, we're being, you know... Yes, we do. Payment of the abstract. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you have here? Uh, no, just real quick. Um, I wanted to give an update on the dog park, oh, okay. um, which is simply that I emailed with Wayne back and forth. Uh, Wayne has sort of become, you know, my guy I talk to there. Um, they've gone and uh, priced out what they think is appropriate pea gravel and so on and so forth, just so they have a rough idea of what they want to do. Um, I, uh, with this, I'm going to go back and talk to Nancy uh, at Parks Conservancy. And try and get that lit up now that they've had their misfits concert. This I think they're Nancy Blackwell. Nancy Blackwell, and Just so the board and is Park Conservancy, yeah. um, who now probably have a little more time on their hands. Um, and we have some legitimate numbers. They seem to be happy simply with the idea of edging it and putting pea gravel. That's kind of the decision they've come to. It's the simplest. <coughs> wouldn't be too expensive. Um, so I, I told them that yes, if. The park, first of all, the park Conservancy says that they found in their experience that the way to do it is to have a monetary gift given to the village, the village purchases, rather than giving a gift of a bunch of gravel because of the liability issues that they've had with the park. 
So if it's done that way, the only issues I see is one is there won't be sales tax on it, which is nice, but B, we may have to go out for bidding for smaller things, even if it has a gift, and that was a question for you. If we're given a gift to uh, beautify a certain public area, um, and that gift is stipulated to be used for a certain purpose, right? Um, does that have to be bid? No. Because it's because it's a specific gift. Correct. And it's yeah. not, oh, it's, so, and it's not coming out of general fund. So well, someone says we'd love to put a tree here. Right. Um, here's here's a thousand dollars to buy the tree from this guy. Well, we don't have to go out to bid to pick which person is going to. On the tree, right? If, if, if it's being paid for, no, the money they should pay donated. for it to, well, the, to the but, person. I would. Well, think. we'll get into this later, but but the the, the opinion of the Bar Conservancy was that that was not the right way to do it, and they felt that it was always better to have the municipality actually make the purchase. But they're telling us where to make the purchase. Well, no, That's I just so. want to be clear on that whether they can. And really, more importantly, whether whether it has to go out to bid if it's being purchased with gifted money. It's not general fund money that was raised publicly, right? Uh, I would, I'd have to, I'd have to uh, research you have that. Time. You have but time. The, you're saying the conservancy people mm -hmm. said the way, the way they do it is the way they do a it is they monetary gift to the municipality. To, and then the municipality goes out and buys whatever it is that they would. So for example, playground equipment, and I think it was specific, you know, playground equipment is a, is a specifically important one because of the reliability involved, right? So if you take if you if you are given some 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 uh, playground equipment and you install it, and there's a, and something happens, the people who are liable are different than if you were given money and you went out and bought it mm -hmm. and put it there in your well, own property. And and it was their feeling that the latter scheme was protected everyone better. Right, but why? So why protected them better. The why donate. would you not uh, bid it out? Because if you're being given money, right, you're not spending taxpayer money. And if they and if the person who donates the money donates it for a specific purpose, that purpose could be so specific that it entails a single vendor. And is that okay? Is that the case in this particular? Situation? I don't know that it is. It, mm, so I kind of doubt it. But but so the question is, do we need to go out for bid? Because some of one at least one part of this, you know, gravel is going to be you know four thousand dollars or thereabouts, right? So it's not a small amount, but it's not public money. So the question is. Well, I don't know. Be kind of public money. I'd have to research it. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to research that? Well, what? Yes. Oh, because once it's given to a municipality, well, it's not public money. I'd say so. Except I mean, that it wasn't. It's above and beyond the budgeted, you know, revenue. I. Well, I, or does that I, not matter? I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's <laughs> okay. Well, we'll have to see because that's question. that's a, that's a question that may come up. All right. Well, and so that's roughly where that stands now. So we're in progress is, is the executive summary for that. And Jimmy would be in charge of doing all the work and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're, they're not doing any work. Able to, you feel comfortable with Yeah, that? we discussed the different options. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the, the possibility of grading it, we would probably bring the contractor they would have to pay for, but, but you know, some of the basic work, that would be the contribution of the village would be Jimmy's and kind of contribution to Jimmy's place. Yeah, there wouldn't be anything that would be opposite to what you would normally do in find future problems with it. Nothing, nothing to be done that's not approved by the DPW. Uh, payment of abstracts, number 814.24, general fund, $13,328.14. Number B14.24, police, $1,894.34. Number 815.01, general fund, $11,461.51. Number B15.01, police, $5,201.06. Do I have a motion to accept those abstracts? Yes, I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Before I adjourn, I've asked uh, Jerry Idlewhite, who has come. Um, and he is currently on our South Nyack Task Force. And Jerry, do you have any updates, anything that you want? Well, I think you've pretty much covered it. The idea that we had uh, meetings with um, a couple of residents for school and came had some nice ideas about um, other alternatives for, uh, for the parking uh, and access situation. So it was great to get you know additional input on this. And we uh, then set up a meeting with uh, um, the state to uh, present them with some of those ideas and ask them to go back and uh, explore them a bit, look for feasibility. I think the idea is I think we're, we're looking for alternatives 
And any alternative is going to have some positive, it's going to have some negatives. I want to be able to get that fleshed out a bit, get feedback on that so we can get some sense as to which way uh, we think it's best for the village. Um, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. sure. uh, <coughs> she can okay. after. Um, <laughs> let me, um, or should um, we can go back into public? Can I do that now, sure. please? Can we go back up to a, a, out to a public meeting? Yeah, unless you. Unless, unless, unless you, well, unless you want to adjourn, and I don't know whether this is a public, if you wanted to be part of the public meeting, or. <coughs> I would say let it adjourn. Okay, we'll let it adjourn. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, let me just check with the resolution. All right. Okay, all in favor. For, uh, I'm sorry, you made the resolution, Tom? Yeah. Yes, okay. Me, second. Okay. Gentlemen, right there. Second. All in favor, meeting is now adjourned. Okay. <coughs> I